Well, I stayed there for a while, mm -hmm. just going back and forth between GNOME and KDE. And eventually Ubuntu came out and I, I switched to it. Uh, and I was running GNOME 2 mm -hmm. for, for a couple releases and then switched to KDE. And I really, really liked KDE 3. For a very long time, it felt like, although it was probably only like a year and a half, but it felt like a really long time because I was so young. Mm -hmm. uh, and then KDE4 came out and I'm like, what, what is this? I'm going to switch to GNOME. And then GNOME, GNOME 3 came out and I'm like, oh, what, what is this? <laughs> And yep. then Unity came out, and then yep, I switched yep. to Unity, and I stayed there for a little bit. And then finally, I warmed up to the to the GNOME design mm -hmm. and went back to GNOME 3, and I was running Ubuntu GNOME at the time that System76 hired me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I floated the idea to Carl, who, who is the CEO of, of System76, hey, we should, we should try to do something like the GNOME spin of Ubuntu, uh, but include a later kernel, inclu include the NVIDIA drivers, include uh, newer Mesa, things like that, so that we don't have to have as many problems shipping hardware. Hmm. And that's where Pop came from. And that was Carl's decision to. What year was that? That, that was 2018. 2018. So, uh, 2017, and then we released in 2018, 1804. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a 1710 release. Uh, Ubuntu 17.10, and then we made Pop OS 17.10, but I would not qualify that as a real release because it was kind of more like a beta release. And then we had a bunch of features we built up for the 18.04 release. So in 2018, uh, we released it with the recovery partition, with the new installer, with the upgrade feature. So a bunch of things were built in that, that now are critical to uh, Pop OS. Mm -hmm. So with that... So with 1710 that was sort of just getting it like mostly pieced together it wasn't exactly ready at that point you would say yeah at 1710 we were using ubiquity as the installer which mm -hmm. was the ubuntu installer at the time and we were basically pre-filling it with drivers support like uh, the nvidia driver for the nvidia iso and we we're also doing some modifications to packages running on the system uh, yeah, new oh. new drivers for things. Your audio just got way louder for some reason. I might have to move. <laughs> ah. Like, uh, there is someone mowing outside. Ah. Yeah. If you want to take a quick break, we can, unless... We might have to, yeah. I'm going to have to go upstairs. Okay, totally fine. So, you're talking about the 17.10 release. You're saying you're getting, like driver modifications in with ubiquity and yeah that's that's pretty much where we were just at yeah it, it was a rebuild of mm -hmm. the ubuntu iso so we downloaded it extracted it uh replaced some files mm -hmm. and then recreated it and mm -hmm. it wasn't wasn't really pop os yet it was more like a beta release and then 1804 we were creating it entirely from scratch mm -hmm. so a very different process so why did you want to do Ubuntu with like a slightly newer kernel, newer drives and things like that? Like why, why was that the direction you wanted to go? Well, uh, we shipped at the time Ubuntu systems mm -hmm. and we couldn't ship Ubuntu because Ubuntu wouldn't boot on a lot of NVIDIA systems, at least right. at the time. Uh, and Ubuntu would not uh, work with a lot of the newer CPUs we were getting. We would get the hardware uh, within days of it becoming public that the hardware even existed. And then Ubuntu's kernel would not change for the whole release cycle. Mm -hmm. So we would have to, no matter what, inject stuff in. And the way we were doing it before was to install Ubuntu and then install a PPA uh, that contained a driver pack that updated some things like Mesa, the Linux kernel, and, and other related things. Mm -hmm. Right, I'd never really considered that from the perspective of a system integrator. Because, you know, most of the time you're going to be able to get Linux running pretty early. But when we're talking about a distro like a Ubuntu, usually like Intel will put out like a big wiki page. Be like, this is how, you, this like this is what you need to do. This is the extra packages you need to install. Huh. No, that actually makes a lot of sense then. 
so that sort of that sort of was the origin of of Pop West, and then from there, like, did you ever expect Pop West to sort of grow into what it is today, or sort of was it just intended to be that sort of we're making this to make the system integration a lot easier? It, it started with uh, we want to have something where a user can download the installation media. Mm-hmm. And it will boot on all of our computers. Right, right. And that was it. And the answer was, we have to update it more regularly. Uh, And Ubuntu does a lot of wonderful things. And they're very good at supporting hardware. But the cycle, the update cycle for their ISOs is is too slow to support new hardware. So Mm -hmm. if you want to support the new hardware, you get the Ubuntu ISO. You add something like no mode set to the kernel command line. And then you boot it. And then you update it, and then you install the NVIDIA driver, and then you reboot and you remove no mode set from the command line, and then finally you have a good working system. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, that's also basically what we have to do with our Ubuntu install still, but we've streamlined the process because our installer can, can install like our PPA along with Ubuntu for all of our Ubuntu installs. And then for, for all of our pop installs, it's all out of the box. Everything works. Mm-hmm. And so this was really a, how do we make the, the uh, reinstall process so simple that any, any uh, system integrator could take pop OS and install it on their hardware. And that also led to some things like the HP dev one, where, where they could take pop OS and modify it the way they wanted to. And then, Every Pop! OS ISO installs on that piece of hardware the way that that uh, that, that team wanted it to. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've integrated all those things in, whereas if you have something like Windows, Ubuntu, Fedora, I mean, those are like, it's a generic image, and it may be missing some things for a particular piece of hardware. So uh, Pop! OS was to integrate things that were required for our hardware, but it turns out that our hardware is so heterogeneous that there are so many different pieces to it like we have laptops that have amd cpus intel cpus we have laptops with nvidia gpus we sell desktops with amd intel and nvidia cpus and gpus it's a very wide spectrum Mm -hmm. and on the desktop side we have different motherboard manufacturers we work with and so with this wide spectrum of hardware and us coming in saying we're making a distribution that works on brand new hardware, that seemed to bring in a lot of people who who were interested in in uh, buying new hardware, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and even if they weren't buying it from us. So um, that that's a a market that especially is is uh, tended towards gamers where they're upgrading their hardware and they need to know if I if I buy a, a new Nvidia GPU, is it going to work? Or am I going to buy it, put it in, the system doesn't even boot, I have to take it out and wait, wait a few months for for something to be released. We're selling that as soon as we can, so Pop! OS has to support it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 